What's that? That's an eagle, one chicken responds. He is the king of all birds, the master of the skies. But we belong to the ground because we are just chickens. He's right. We ain't got no bald eagle. That thing by your side, it's a chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A. Just kidding. I still love Hawkeye. Come on, guys. Anyway, back to the video. Would you believe me if I said that for the past four years, everything we knew of Sharpshooter was nonsense? No, you wouldn't. And you would think that I'm exaggerating, which is 100% true. <laughs> anyway, how did we come to this point? From Death Strike to Double Engraving and even Double itself has multiple builds. All four of them each bearing from... 900 to 1100 to 1 1.3 to 1 1.5 all of which have their own unique play styles every build being more or less an evolution of its older version too but it doesn't stop there what was born after though is the real deal i present to you my greatest creation from the makers of igu baba industries 1200 spec the 978 crit cheesimo fully voice activated behold the hawk and doodle will stoop diesel all right so this is a build that uses only dev strike and runs 1.2 to 1.3k spec and the rest of your points will be put in the crit rate which would land you around 30% to... No, not 30%. Which would land you around 35% to 40% crit rate. Now, what of its playstyle though? Double and traditional Death Strike has always more or less been bound to the strict restrictions of commitment. Every last rush you take, you have to burst in 8 seconds. And if the boss disappears within the 8 second time frame, it breaks your rhythm and you end up having skills being unused. Which leads to the byproduct of being forced to wait for your next last rush in order to preserve your cooldowns. Now this is both a good and bad thing, right? The good being that your rotation will always have order and consistency. Bursting is also easier to execute since it's always the same. Now, the bad, however, is pretty awful. Making a mistake, just one mistake, or encountering a situation out of your control could essentially mean you lose one full burst or a big portion of it. With that said, the glaring weakness of Death Strike is in the fact that it has no freedom and no flexibility. There isn't something you can fall back on. There's no backup plan, pretty much. It's a literal do or die when it comes to bursting as an SS. The new build, however, tackles this issue head on and also does a significantly higher amount of DPS. The feeling is almost as if you've been unshackled, right? Released from the weights that were holding you back. Playstyle wise, as you can see, it revolves more around you managing your meter generation skills to constantly keep the boss debuffed and having the flexibility to cast your spells when the situation deems to be worthy of it. Now, rather than being forced to commit, having this playstyle means that even last rush by itself is benefiting off the previous last rush, which is the big game changer of this build as to why it can compete and go higher than regular builds like the traditional death strike or double engraving in general, which is known to be the best build, right? It's almost kind of like you're a gunslinger now, but Instead of weapon swapping, you're dealing with meter management and timing. They're still pretty different though. Sadly, despite it all, this build isn't all rainbow and sunshines either. It has its glaring weaknesses too, and you could probably already tell what they are. Let's start with the first one, difficulty. This build, much like Double, places a heavy emphasis on class and rate knowledge. You have to understand your meter combinations, skill usage accuracy, and most importantly, cooldowns. Now, cooldown management is by far the biggest factor you need to practice and master. Let's look at an example here, right? Although Death Strike is up, I intentionally hold the bird and wait before chucking it. Why? 
Because when you look back at your meter skills, you want to make sure that you have a combination ready to use in under the next 8 seconds so that you can keep up the last rush debuff constantly. In a raid, however, this is quite an easy skill to pick up since you can see the timer on the boss. In a guardian though, you cannot. So what do you do in a guardian then? For me, what I personally do is glance at my meter spells and base it off a 5 second rule. But why 5 though? and not 8 seconds. Isn't Last Rush 8 seconds? You know, isn't Death Strike an 8 second deep buff? Well, simple. To account for casting time of the meter spells and throwing the bird out again, right? All of which takes time. That is why you need to pre-plan to account for possible errors that may occur and give yourself a feasible amount of time to execute. Now for the second weakness, which is burst damage. With how the build's playstyle and stats are, your burst damage in a given moment can now vary very largely. Why? The first one being the most obvious is critical rate being at a value of 80 to 90%, which isn't bad, right? But you have to bear in mind, traditional death strike and double engraving builds all consist of 90% to 100% crit rate by themselves, right, individually, which is great for consistency, and the rotations are almost always the same, which is very different from this build. With Death Strike spec, however, your cooldowns are gonna be more all over the place, and some combos are bound to be slightly less than what your peak combo could be. This, however, can be prevented if you know the rate in and out. Like I mentioned earlier, a good understanding of when and where you need to be, basically your positioning, right? The way you position your character so that you can pre-plan for it and execute. Here you can see some examples of how the way I do them in endgame raids and even deathless helm modes, right? The damage speaks for itself too. This for example, Hell Be A Kiss, both me and Woke pulled the highest with this build with a huge amount of time to spare and having only one party synergy for it for our team. This was also a deathless pull as well. Now here's the reality of playing Hawkeye. If you want to do good damage with this class, having good gameplay alone isn't enough. If you truly want to try and compete with this class, you need to play smart and you need to play good too. Overall, this is quite a different perspective to Hawkeye. A strong build nonetheless, but not without its flaws. There are so many tips and tricks to the build that I would still like to share, right? But any more in this video might turn into 30 minutes or maybe even 15, which I don't want to. I want to keep it short. Instead, I have four videos for you here if you would like to see this build's gameplay or the double engraving 1.1k spec build, which has the highest burst damage out of all the builds that has been made so far. So that's it. Merry Christmas or Happy New Year whenever this video comes out. Right, see ya.